Hello. Today we will be um, doing an example on sequential circuit analysis. And the example we have in front of us is using the JK flip-flop. So when we have a problem like this and we're trying to analyze it, the first thing we ask ourselves is, is this a melee or a more? And in order for us to make that decision, we look at the output, in this case Z, and we look at the inputs um, coming into that output. So basically, what is the expression for Z? And if the expression for Z uses the present state and external input, then it's a melee model. If it uses only present state, then it's a more. So in this case, we have this input is Q1, this input is X, and this lower input is Q2, and this input is x bar so the output of the bottom and gate becomes x bar q2 and the output of the top and gate becomes x q1 so z is equal to x q1 or x bar q2 because this is an or gate right here so as we look at this expression we see that z output is dependent on both present state q and external input X. So this should be a mealy machine. Um, so with that respect, we will work with our state tables and state diagrams eventually using the mealy um, representation. So the next step would be to figure out how many inputs we have and how many um, states, uh, state variables. So we have one input X, and that could be a zero or a one. We have two state variables q1 and q2 and these could be 0 0 0 1 1 0 or 1 1 and we have a clock signal coming in so we will work now to get um, expressions for j1 k1 j2 k2 because that will be the first step we have to go through after identifying all the um, elements pertaining this circuit so this first OR gate right here, the inputs to it are X, and it takes also Q1. So this is X OR Q1. Then it leads into an AND gate, and the input for the second input for that AND gate is Q2. Q2. So right here, this is Q2 and did X OR Q1. Um, that is also the input to J1, and then the input to K1, so K1 becomes equal to Q2 ended with X or Q1, with a bar on top of the whole thing because there's an inverter right here. So next we'll look at the J2, K2 inputs, and we see this is an exclusive OR gate, and that gate takes in Q1 bar and the other input is X. So this is X exclusive or Q1 bar. And then K2 um, takes in X and it becomes X bar. So now what J1 is equal to Q2 ended with X or Q1. K1 is the inverse because there's this inverter right here. So it's the inverse of that expression of J1. J2 is equal to X exclusive or Q1 bar. And K2 is equal to X bar. And then we have our expression Z. So now that we have these expressions, our next step is to get K maps. So now we have these expressions. And um, looking at J2, I'd like to expand that to make it easier to enter into the K map um, because the next step we'll work on is entering these equations into the k-map because remember um, analysis we're really doing reverse of design 
So J2 is equal to X exclusive or Q1 bar, which is equal to X Q1 bar double bar or X bar Q1 bar. Um, so that gives me X Q1 or X bar Q1 bar. So we will have to draw five K-maps, one for each one of these expressions. J1 over here is the same as saying it's, I'm going to multiply it out, so it's equal to x q2 or q1 q2. And that's just to make it easier to enter into the k-map. So when we look at j1, we see that x is 1 and q2 is 1. So these two are 1, 1. So we look at when x is 1, it's going to be the second column right here. And then we look when q2 is going to be 1. And it's going to be these two rows, which means that these two are ones. And the reason we enter ones is because this is a um, sum of products expression. Then we look at Q1, Q2. So that's a 1, 1 on Q1, Q2. And it's only this row right here. So we put 1 over here. And then everything else becomes a 0. Now, technically, K1 is the inverse of J1, so we can actually just put whenever there's a 0, there's a 1. And whenever there's a 1, we put a 0. And that would give me the inverse. And that would give me the inverse of J1. So now we need to look at J2, and we've established that j2 is equal to x q1 or x bar q1 bar. So that's a 1 on x and a 1 on q1. 1 on x means, again, this column. A 1 on q1 means these two rows, so these two are going to be 1s. And then we have a 0 on x and a 0 on q1. So when x is 0, it's going to be the first column. And when Q1 is a 0, is going to be the first two rows, so it's going to be these two cells. And then the others will be zeros. K2 is simply X bar, so whenever X is a 0, that's what K2 is going to be. That's when we have 1s there. And then if we look at um, the Z expression, we have X is 1, Q is 1. So when X is 1... It's this column right here. When Q1 is 1, um, it's these last two rows. So these two, we put 1s in those two cells. And then the next term is X bar Q2. So X bar means it's this first column. Q2 means it's these two rows. So these two will be 1s and everything else will be zeros. So now we have our expressions that came from the circuit in the form of K maps and they are in the form of K maps where I can see that this is my present state so these combinations are my present state and this is my external input and I know what my J is and I know what my K is for that situation so if I have my present state and my JK input I should be able to create my next state and if then I create my next state, I'll be able to create a state table because I'll have present and next state based on the external input X. So that will be the next step we'll take is to look at these maps and from there create our next state um, table. But in order to do that, we need to concatenate or put together the J1K1 in one place and the J2K2 in one map. Um, the Z will remain the same, that won't change, so we won't readdress that until later. So next I will put those two maps together for J1K1 and J2K2. Okay, so now that we have um, the K maps concatenated together for the J1K1 and J2K2, and then we have the Z on its own, now we can look and um, remember first the JK um, flip-flop function and if we look at JK we know that JK says if I have 0 0 my next state my next state Q is Q 
And if I have 0, 1, it's a 0. One zero is a one, one one is a q bar, you toggle. So we know this is the functionality, so what we can do now is actually create a next state table. So we have present state, and we have q1, q2, and we have next state for x is equal to zero, and x is equal to one, and for that we have also q1, q2 next state, and q1, q2 next state. So we'll assume that the order of our states is the same order as what's in the k-map to make our lives a little bit easier. And from there, we will look at current state, 0, 0. For x is 0, my jk was 0, 1. But I'm going to look at that for q1 first. So I'm looking at j1, k1. So for q1, that means I'm looking at these. And that will be counted as my present state. So if I'm in present state 0, 0, what is my next state q1? My present state is 0. My input on jk is 0, 1. So we look at the present state q is 0. The input is 0, 1. And if the input is 0, 1 on jk, and for q1 present state is 0, so I will be filling in this column right now for q1 for x is 0, because that's the column I'm looking at in the k-map. So if my present state is 0, 0, my input is 0, 1. So present state 0, input 0, 1 gives me a 0 on the output, so I'm going to put a 0 right there. I have another 0, 1 for the next cell. That gives me jk 0, 1 gives me 0 on, gives me zero on the next state, so I'm going to put a 0 there. And I'll see that I have a pattern. So there's another 0, 1, so I'll, I'll just... So I'll just go ahead and put a 0 there. And then this says 1, 0, and I see 1, 0 gives me a 1 on the output the next state. So I'm going to put a 1 here. Then I go to x is a 1 column, and then I start looking at these. Um, so again, I have a 0, 1 here. So again, I have a 0, 1 here and a 0, 1 there. So that will be um, a 0 and a 0. And then I have one zeros here and there, so that will be one and a one. Then I will do the same for this k map. I will look at q2 this time, and I will look at x is zero. And I'll see that I have a one, 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 one in the first two columns, and I see that one, one gives me a toggle on the state. So in the first cell, the state current state was a 0, so that means it'll turn to a 1. And in the second cell, it was a 1, so it'll turn to a 0. We've established that 0, 1 gives me a 0 on the output, and I've completed this column. Now I turn to the next column, and I see a 0, 0, 0, 0, which says you stay in the same state. So if the present state was 0, it stays as 0. Present state was 1, it stays as 1. So the next cells are... 1, 0, and 1, 0, and 1, 0 gives me a 1 on the next state, so I enter 1. So now I actually have my next state table. I'm missing the z output because our next state is a next state slash output. So what I need to do next is just make sure I have um, my, net, my output in there. So because it's a melee model, I do a slash within the map. The table, I'm sorry. And then I just enter 0, 1, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 1, 1. So now that I have my state table, I can go ahead and get my state um, diagram out of it. But the first thing I need to do is do um, some state assignments. So I'm going to make the assumption of A is equal to state 0, 0, B is equal to 0, 1, C is equal to 1, 1, and D is equal to 1, 0. Now, if you are not provided with the state assignments, you can make an assumption. Otherwise, you need to follow what's given to you in the problem. And if you're told the state assignments have to be in a certain way, then you have to use those. So I just went ahead and rewrote this um, to make sure I have it in a different um, slide so that we can work on it in one go. So now that I have my state assignment, I will redraw my present state and next state slash output 
um, with x is 0, x is 1 in terms of the state assignments. So whenever there's a 0, 0, I will replace with an A, and B is a 0, 1, C is a 1, 1, and D is a 1, 0. So here it's a 0, 1, which is a B slash 0. 0, 0 is an A, so this one is an A slash 1. 1, 0 is a D, so that's a D slash 1. And 0, 0 is an A, so that's an A slash 0. And then next column when x is 1, I'm going to say 0, 0 is an a slash 0. 1, 1 we said is a c, so that's a c slash 0, c slash 1. And 0, 1 is b, so that's a b slash 1. Now that I have my next state table in terms of state assignment, I can actually draw my state diagram. So I have four states, a, b, c, and d. And the first state A, I'll look at this first row. When X is 0, if I'm in A, I go to B with an output of a 0. So if I'm in A and X is 0, I go to B with an output of a 0. If I'm in A and X is 1, I stay in A with an output of a 0. Then I will look at state B. And I keep doing that for every state. When x is 0 and I'm in state B, I go to A with an output of a 1. When I'm in B and x is 1, I go to C with an output of a 0. Then I look at C state. When I'm in C and x is 0, I go to D with an output of a 1. And if I'm in C and x is 1, I stay in C with an output of a 1. Now my final state D, if I'm in D and I get an X is a 0, I go to A with an output of a 0. And if I'm in D and I get a 1, I go to B with an output of a 1. And this becomes our state diagram. And this concludes the um, analysis of a sequential circuit that had uh, two JK flip-flops and one external input.